Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Paul Murray, product leader for RotoWeld 3.0 here at Technar Automation. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining our webinar today uh, for taking the time out of their busy schedules. Uh, this session will be recorded. Um, we'll disperse it after so you can review all of the content and close. And I'd like to let you know that at the, at the bottom of your screen in Zoom, there's a Q&A function. So at any time throughout uh, the demo or my presentation, you can ask questions. Uh, and we're going to get to them towards the end of the presentation. Uh, and we can stick around on the meeting uh, for Q&A for an open dialogue if that's necessary. So kicking off with a quick agenda, uh, there's going to be a lot of technical information and I'm going to move along fast to keep the schedule short. Uh, so again, feel free to use the Q&A uh, function or to send an email to info at rotoweld.com with any other questions. Uh, so diving right into our agenda, I'll start with a quick presentation on who is Technar, what do we do, uh, and then jumping right over to the RotoWeld website where I'll give a tour and orientation of the system. And the nice part about that is you can visit rotoweld.com uh, at any time uh, and sort of follow along the presentation I went through today uh, with all the relevant information. Uh, after that, we'll step out to the shop floor, quick tour of the components of a RotoWeld, and then we'll dive right into our demo on our 8-inch Schedule 40 carbon steel pipe, which we're going to weld from root to cap. Beginning with the presentation. So who's Technar Automation? Well, we are founded in the uh, early 1990s and we're, our job is to turn science into durable innovations. And a good example of that is the RotoWeld. Uh, the first RotoWeld uh, was invented in the early 1990s and it was a breakthrough because it uses machine vision and motorized controls to act like the welder's eyes and hands and to perform open bevel pipe welds automatically. So building off 30 years of experience and advancements in technology, we've arrived at the third generation, RotoWeld 3.0. So heading over to rotoweld.com, we'll start with why RotoWeld? Why do customers buy RotoWeld and why does it work so well? The first reason is that we require minimum welding experience. So through managing the arc through the camera and robotic controls, new operators are easy to adapt to this quickly and easily. And the average training is less than two days for new operators and even quicker for experienced operators because it's very intuitive uh, using the joystick. Uh, it's just like using the welder's hands, except that they're separated uh, away from the heat and intensity of the arc. The average welding shop who adopts RotoWeld from semi-automatic MIG welding is going to realize about a 400% productivity increase uh, versus their old way. And Moving from stick or TIG, we see even greater gains than 400% uh, due to the speed of the automatic GMAW process. A big key for us in welding automation is to produce a high quality weld every single time. It's very important when automating that we have a high level of quality and that we understand what contributes to quality. So with a roto weld in our automatic welding mode that you'll see during the demo, we're actually adapting to things like changing gap, uh, land and high-low situations on the fly uh, through our adaptive vision. Critical to the QA and QC side of, of critical welding is the remote tracking of every weld that you make. Uh, so every roto weld is equipped with our Pro Data Log, which is a cloud monitoring software that's absolutely free and provided to you. Uh, this allows us to track job ID, welder ID, and even right down to the part serial number and then to view in the cloud the actual procedures and settings used on a second by second basis, we can generate reports and we can actually withdraw the high quality video that was taken during welding and save that as well. So you'll notice today during our Zoom demo, uh, the camera quality that Zoom pushes is a, is a lot lower than the, the image quality we're actually capturing and what the welder's actually seeing while welding. So at the end of the weld, I'm going to hop onto the Pro Data Log and show you the actual footage that we capture. Because again, Zoom is pushing it at a lower frame rate and it tends to look a little bit darker in the Zoom presentation than it does uh, in real life. Every RotoWeld is customizable to your reality. So we fabricate complete turnkey systems, but we do it in different shapes, sizes, configurations, and we have a few different options. And I'm going to get to that in just a moment. And the last point, most importantly on why RotoWeld is improving the welder's working conditions. So with the growing skills gap, it's important not only to increase the individual welder's productivity, but to make the job safer 
uh, and more alluring to the younger generation. So by getting the welder away from the heat, the heat, sorry, fumes and UV radiation of the arc, uh, we make it a more or a less strenuous job, uh, less weaving, less manipulating the torch by hand. Well, no manipulating the torch by hand. So we're eliminating all wrist, back and neck strain as well uh, at the same time with roto weld. Moving on to our different models. I'll run this video in the background while I talk, which is a roto weld twin bay. So the difference between a single bay and a twin bay is that a single bay is your entry point into the automated uh, pipe spool welding with a roto weld that's going to have one positioner and one robotic travel carriage. The, uh, the twin bay is really the next step up because we maximize arc on time and achieve the ultimate uh, results for factored diameter inches per day. Because as you can see in our video, while one bay is welding, a second operator can be loading and feathering the tacks, preparing the spool for as soon as the first operator is done on the first spool. Uh, this can be obviously alternating back and forth at any time. And this is how we really crank up our arc on time. So we get to talking and welding automation a lot about the pounds per hour of the process. Um, this is pounds per hour is kind of like the horsepower. But what we actually want to know is what's our operating factor. And that's more like our true zero to 60 time, our acceleration when, when everything's factored in. So by having the highest possible pounds per hour multiplied by the highest possible arc on time, this is how you achieve truly, truly state of the art, uh, high productivity with welding automation. It's not just about what you can offer uh, in a pounds per hour standpoint. Uh, we also have the difference between a standard duty and a heavy duty. Uh, a standard duty turns from three to 42 inch pipe and has 10,000 pound idler supports, uh, which you can see two per bay in this video, while the heavy duty goes from three to 48 inch on the positioner and has 15,000 pound idler supports. The other difference with the HD is that we gain an additional six inches of center line clearance between the chuck and the base. So for a total on the HD of 71 inches as compared to 65 inches on the standard duty. The reason for this is we wanna maximize turnability of parts in your shop. The more parts we can turn and weld in the 1G with RotoWeld, the more productive and profitable you'll be. We also offer a couple of options on any configuration. So on any standard duty or heavy duty or single twin, all of these options are available. Uh, so first is slip on flange welding, uh, which makes program creation for, for fillet welding very, very easy because the roto weld positions its arm automatically with its servo drives uh, to go to the correct location for fillet welds or butt welds when you have this feature. So again, maximizing the amount of welds we can make on our automated cell. Next option is our fume extractor. What's very unique about this is that the ducting is all contained in our cat track and the hood is going to follow the robotic arm to every single joint on every single spool uh, with very little positioning dependent on the operator. And source capture is one of the most effective ways to eliminate welding fume and have a, a safer welding workshop. Uh, the environment, not only for welders, but for everybody working in the shop environment. We offer a submerged arc welding option where we equip our roto weld with a Lincoln FlexTech 650 power source, uh, torch for the root welding and the torch for the sub arc as well. So what that allows us to do is make root passes using the GMAW process. And then with our procedural database and knowledge, uh, we can go straight to a hot pass with submerged arc as well as filling and capping. Uh, so we can really get some great mechanical properties uh, using the submerged arc welding process. Another nice feature is we make flex, uh, flux catch bins, which hook onto your idler rolls, sit beneath the joint and capture all the unused flux spilling off the pipe. And they're easily dumped into a side receptacle for reuse. And a couple of smaller options we have are drive rolls for flux core or metal cord arc welding, stainless steel grippers uh, to avoid contamination on alloyed pipes and rubberized idler rolls Again, for the same reason, to avoid contamination on your, your alloys like stainless or duplex. Uh, last but not least, I'd encourage you on your own time to take a uh, look at the case studies tab on our website. 
Uh, it's a great resource because it shows you real uh, workshops around the world who are using RotoWeld, and you can actually get some access to the stories, a uh, few quotes, uh, interviews, but most importantly, really nice high quality images uh, of real parts being welded in real shops all around the world. So this concludes uh, my website presentation. So I'm going to uh, switch cameras here and I'm going to head out to the floor to our RotoWeld twin bay system and give you a full tour followed by our demo weld. So this is our RotoWeld standard duty twin bay model. And the first thing I want you to notice is this is a compact assembly uh, intended for factory testing. So we've only got one set of a uh, length of rails per positioner, which is 16 feet uh, from the chuck to the end. But normally we do a, a configuration really to suit your needs, but most common is a 20 foot primary bay and then a long bay on the end uh, for, so you can weld a variety of spools with the minimum uh, floor space required. Talking about our base, uh, we don't depend on a level floor uh, to achieve a level spool because we have leveling bolts all throughout our, our track sections, which allow us on any floor uh, to, to achieve a perfectly level track. And that's very important because the backbone of the RotoWeld is its rail-based system. And by that, we mean the first set of rails where we have our traveling pipe supports. So these are very, very easy to move. They're engaged hydraulically uh, very quickly. They come up and they're always in perfect center alignment with our chuck and therefore with our spool. Uh, so this makes setup very, very quick. And it's another way we're maximizing arc on time, not just the pounds per hour of the welding. Following along our rails to our positioner itself, we have 50,000 inch pounds of turning torque and we make a counterweight as well. So when we get into bigger elbows and fittings that exceed the 50,000 inch pounds of torque, we offset it with a counterweight and we're still able to turn large and complex parts. Uh, we've had customers uh, turn parts with a, a diameter of one meter and with enormous elbows and using the counterweight, it's totally possible to be done on the roto weld. Another feature of each positioner when it's not in use and the carriage is welding on the other bay, it's the set of individual foot pedals. This is what allows a second operator to be feathering tacks, loading the spool and having it ready so that as soon as our arc's done on the other bay, we come right down and begin welding, again, maximizing our time with the arc on. The second set of rails that I'm, I'm standing on the bed of now that's critical to roto weld is our, our rails for our traveling carriage, which moves from bay to bay and joint to joint on an individual spool. So you'll notice we have our cat track here and following me along to the primary bay. So with our cat track, we have no cables on the floor. Everything's automatically managed as the, as the operator travels up and down bay to bay. So with roto weld, there's no tripping hazards, no wires and no damage ever done uh, to things laying exposed on the floor. In the primary bay, uh, you'll notice it's a, basically an exact replica of the second bay. They might be different in length, sometimes in configuration, but what we have is again, another two pipe support stands and an identical positioner. The only difference is in the primary positioner, we're housing our welding power source uh, down in our panel here, which is closed off to be kept free of uh, grinding dust, dirt and other hazards in the shop environment uh, to maximize the life of our welding power source. Taking a closer look at our robotic arm, this is driven by zero backlash harmonic drives. And when we call a welding program for an eight inch pipe and we ask the arm to go, it moves to the position on the eight inch pipe with the correct welding angle for root pass and fill pass welding. And it does this with the touch of one switch. There's no robotic welding programming uh, required with RotoWeld to, to make the arm move to the correct position. It's just a matter of naming the diameter of the pipe and hitting go. At the end of our arm, we have our camera, which allows viewing of the arc uh, in the open bevel during welding. So it gives the welder a very, very good view, uh, a lot like they would see with their own eyes when performing an open bevel weld. We have two torches. We have our air-cooled root pass torch, which allows us to get tight into the joint with smaller consumables. And then we have our large 600 amp fill pass welding torch, which is uh, perfect for the continuous welding when we get onto large diameters. Uh, we won't get into any torch overheating thanks to the water cooling. The other advantage of a twin torch design is that we're running two wires and two gases. So we have an individual root pass wire and gas. These wires are fed off standard four roll Miller drive units 
So all drive rolls, guides, things like that, replacement parts are all off the shelf, replaceable locally uh, at a low cost. Taking a quick look inside our cabinet, we can see where we keep our consumable wires. Um, we have our root pass wire and our fill pass wire. And this is very important because sometimes in, in more critical procedures, we'll run a solid wire root pass and maybe a flux core or metal core fill pass where we're using a different gas for each wire and the two different wires. But this results in zero change over time for the operator. They make their root pass and then they transition directly to their filling passes and they don't need to make any switches of consumables or gases. We have an option for bulk consumables. So to the side of our carriage, we can mount large wire drums. Uh, if you require something larger, like a 500 pound drum, as opposed to the 44 pound spool. Taking a closer look inside our cabinet, we can see our Lincoln PowerWave STP welding module. This is what allows us to perform uh, the root pass with a super high quality. Uh, STP was developed in the 1980s and is very, very mature. And it's known as the de facto standard for root pass pipe welding. In the base, again, we're protected from debris and dirt. Uh, we can't see it, but it's our Lincoln PowerWave S500. And the unique part about the S500 is it has a customized arc for every application. So when we get into different things like carbon steel as opposed to high strength, low alloy, uh, stainless steels, duplex. There's always the right weld mode for the wire and gas combination that we want to use. So this gives us the perfect arc for every application. Very important to the operator is our control pendant. It's simple, easy to use, and it's very intuitive. And it's where the operator who's doing the welding interacts with all aspects of roto weld. The joystick is basically where they always keep their hand because it has three different roles. When we're not welding and we're positioning for welding, the role of the joystick is to control carriage movement up and down the welding track in, in its first axis. And in its second axis, it's rotating our positioner to allow us to get ready to start our weld on attack. The second role of the joystick is during welding. So this is our left and right steering to maintain centering in the joint. It's also our up and down to control travel speed and arc position in the open bevel. Uh, there's some easy to use switches, which give us a parameter change on the fly. If we need an extra half a volt, a little bit more wire, a little bit more weaving, the operator can actually add this very easily using these toggle switches along the bottom. And then the third roll of the joystick, and I'm going to share our user interface, now you're able to see the RotoWeld user interface on your screen. And I want to take a moment to point out to you that on your screen between the RotoWeld view that you see and our camera view, which is probably quite small right now, there's a small white tab you can grab with your mouse and drag to even out the views uh, between the live camera and the RotoWeld screen. So navigating our user interface, that's the third role of the joystick. So we're able to select operator ID, job ID, and even individual part serial number. And this is what gives us the end, the ultimate traceability. So very easy to use. When we wanna change a welding program, we highlight our welding program name selection, hit enter. We can scroll through our list for different pipe diameters and applications that we have saved in our library. And to back out and cancel, we simply hit stop and back out. At the bottom of our screen, we have our at glance of our welding procedure. So here the operator can quickly see they've called up their program. Okay, this is going to be a three pass weld with a root, a fill and a cap. Settings look good, let's go. And normally the settings are locked out after engineering development's done. So the operator can make about a 10% change to these settings, but the procedure is going to be right every single time a program called up. And last but not least is the large center area of the screen, which is where we view uh, our welding. So when positioning on the pipe, which you'll see momentarily during the demo, uh, our, LED, our LED array illuminates and we can see our torch position in the bevel before welding. And when we start welding, it actually darkens just like a welder's helmet. And we have the perfect filtered view uh, of our root pass and our fill and cap pass welding through the camera screen here. So it's mimicking the real view of the weld uh, without the UV radiation or the heat of being near it. Uh, so with this portion of the tour done, 
I'd like to introduce Chris Trudell, our senior service technician, who's going to be doing our demo today uh, on our eight inch schedule 40 carbon steel pipe. Chris, I give the floor to you. Hi everyone. So nice to meet you. Uh, I've been with Technar for 30 years and installed many of these around the world. So I'm gonna to try to explain uh, what we do and how we do it. So, um, so right now what we've got is the eight inch get 40 with the proper welding program already in there. So now all I need to do is I will put the sensor for the root pass, which is required for the, um, for the power wave. Then I will lay down my, the arm to the proper welding position, which the machine knows because it's a, it knows the size of the pipe. And we will be welding 45 degree down hand for the root pass. So my sensor is installed. So basically just lower my torch. Then I will move the carriage to bring it near my joint. I will start on the middle of the tack. Just set the stick out I want. Rotate my pipe. Put that on my middle of the tack. Proper stick out. And then I look on my camera on my screen right here. And I can center it on my tack. So now I'm in the middle of my tack. Basically, I will press start and we will start to weld. So what we need to understand here is that during the root pass, Basically, what we do is that with the simple move of the joystick, we're able to control four welding parameters at the same time. So basically, we have the traveling speed, wire feed rate, voltage, and oscillation. So when we're doing the route pass, uh, with the joystick up and down, we're controlling the traveling speed. So what the machine does is when the traveling speed is changing, all the upper, other parameters will change automatically depending on the traveling speed it, it's going at. So this is what we call the 4D synergy. So from there, we will establish the arc, put uh, the puddle where we want it to be to have proper fusion. And once we're there, by simply pressing enter, we will add another layer, which, which is the rootomatic, which basically will be looking at the screen, analyzing the image, and it will speed up or slow down according to the gap variation. And from there, 4D synergy is always working in the back. So I'm ready to go. Just press start. And up or down, so I can I control my traveling speed. So right now I'm slowing down a little bit. So right now what I see is, I see my two root face in the puddle below it. So this is what I wanna see. When, when I see this, I know that I'm all, my penetration is good and I'm, I'm all fused inside the pipe. So from here, right now this, this would be manual mode. If I'm not changing the traveling speed with the joystick, it all stays the same. Now, if I add the root of matting on, there we go. I just set my reference. And from there, the machine is actually looking at the image, analyzing the image. And it's, it's changing the traveling speed accordingly to the gap to still achieve proper fusion. So of course, I need to steer right or left if need be, a bit faster if need be. And then what we, what, what we need to keep in mind is that Every prep is a bit different and we need to adapt to the gap. And this is exactly what it does. If we would have a machine that requires always the same preparation all the time to have the perfect wells, this would not be efficient in the, in the pipe spooling industry. So now I'm getting on attack. So the machine will speed up a little bit. And then when we will exit the attack, it will slow down and go keep going in the root gap. I can make it a bit to the right, tiny bit faster, there we go. So this is, this is what's special about it is that it will look at the image, it will adapt to the root gaps because it's necessary in this industry. So this is how the root pass is working. 
Not next, when we will go on the filling passes, the filling passes are actually fixed parameters. But like Paul said before, I have my override. So when I will be in my hot pass, I will be welding. And if, if I need to adjust a little bit, I have my override here. So wire, bolts, oscillation, or traveling speed. But once the program is properly set, I mean, it's, there's not much to do. It's just to pay attention to little details to make sure we have proper arc location on the root pass and as well on the hot pass and cap. So another attack is coming here at the left. Machine is speeding up a little bit, going through the gaps, through the tack, sorry. Slowing down at the end of the tack. So we can see that the arc is really in front of the puddle. How do I know that? I can see the slaughter going through the gap. So the arc is really making the fusion here, which is really important. We don't want the arc to be on top of a huge puddle. That would be just, you know, pouring metal in the root opening. Steer it right or left. Go. So we put root face. Basically, the main reason is that it's holding the puddle there. So it's easier to weld. And if we melt all the root face, well, we know that we have a good fusion because the root face is about 332, which is pretty thick. So if we fuse everything, if we, if we fuse the root face, we know it's all good. So we're about to close the well right now. I'll just remove the automatic mode. Root fast is pretty much done. So from this point, I will just remove my sensor, raise the head a bit and position myself for the filling position for the hot pass. Just remove the sensor. Raise my head, lower it and then it will reach my filling position. So we change position basically to achieve, you know, the best welding position to achieve fastest possible filling passes. So all these angles you can set the way you want. And once they're set we're, uh, and you're happy with the weld, then your welding program is done. So now I'm gonna start the hot pass. Here it's fixed parameters. Right or left, if I need to steer, there we go. And I have my override if need be. I'll just move a bit back so that I'm not too much welding light. So this is the hot patch right here. So what's really important is that to be sure that the arc is in front of the puddle as we have now. Hot pass is really critical. I can put a bit more voltage. Here a bit right, speed up or slow down a bit. Chris? Yes? I just wanted to point out to everybody here again, as I mentioned in Zoom, uh, the weaving pattern seems a little bit erratic, but it's actually quite smooth. It's actually the frame rate of Zoom uh, that makes it look a little more uh, different than what we're seeing in real life. And also prior to welding, the, the off arc image looked a little bit dark, uh, but it's actually much brighter on the on the roto weld screen than what we're seeing on Zoom. So like what said before, we have a lock and unlock key. So once the welding program is done the way you want, you remove if you put the key out lock and you remove it, the operator is only able to use the override. So he's not able to do main changes to the welding program. So the other important thing here that's really important is that we fine tune the weld and once we're happy with it, 
let's say I'm happy right now with my eight inch get 40 that I'm doing right now. And I want to weld an eight, a 10 inch get 40. Basically what I would do is I would just copy this eight inch and rename it 10 inch. And I'm pretty much ready to go. Then I just need to weld the coupon to make sure there's no fine tuning required, but it will be pretty close. So once you're there, so this is the cap that's starting right now. So once you've got a couple of welding program to your taste that you fine tune, it's, it's just a matter of, of copy paste and fine tune it a little bit. So you can build your uh, welding program library to the way you want really quickly. I can put a bit more votes. So it's probably a bit less, steer a bit. So it will perform the cap and that's pretty much done for this weld. So we've been doing this a long time. This is the third generation. I mean, we put all our knowledge in, in this machine. We feel that it's really up to the challenge. It's really reliable as well. So to increase productivity, get new, new jobs. This is, this is the machine. We recently had an installation with the Roto Weld uh, where we had, it was in the crate on the Monday. And by the Friday, uh, we had passed 10 ASME x-rays with brand new operators uh, of the customers uh, choosing in their weld shop uh, with zero failures on 10 x-ray coupons. Uh, so with only five days for setup and training. So that's sort of an indication how mature the product is and uh, how easy it is to use. And also for us, what's really important is that when we go install the machine, we're working the, with the operator. So he used the machine, he weld with the machine. So he knows what needs to be done to achieve the results that you want. We do not tell you how to weld. You're still the one that decides how to weld. So when we leave, you're able to do and perform welding programs to your, uh, to your liking. Later on, if ever need be, we can connect remotely as we are right now. We can, we can actually look at you welding and help you out as well to support you. Same thing if ever hardware issue occurs. So we're almost done our filling passes now. At the end of the filling pass, I will just raise the head. And if I would have another weld to perform, I would move the carriage away, select the proper welding program, lower my head and start to weld. So it's really quick to position the welding head and it's at the proper place every time. There we go, it's up to you, Paul. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. All right, so now that our welding is finished, I can share my screen with our Pro Data Log software and I'll show you the actual videos and reports that we've uh, retained immediately uh, for traceability. Uh, just a moment here. So here on the screen now is our Pro Data Log, which we, we log into over the internet. Um, a brand new machine here. So we, we have only performed six weld joints before 48 inches. Um, so we can look at it from a stopping standpoint. How many welds are we making that are incomplete? Uh, do we have an issue with training or an operator who is performing wrong? Uh, we can see our welded quantity in terms of factored diameter inches. And we can take a look at our arc on time. Um, we can judge these either against each other or on their own. Another thing we can see is interruptions because we don't want to see stopped welds too often. So this really gives us our metrics uh, for quality and for productivity. Scrolling down to our at view list now, I can see the actual welds that we just made. I can generate a PDF report. And here we have an inspection report, which tells us exactly what took place. We started our weld at 11.26 PM, finished at 11.36, and it was a nine minute weld. 
we can see our power settings, we can see our procedure that we used, and actually all of our parameters, uh, everything in our background menus. Uh, so this is an inspection report. So this is what uh, QA or QC uh, might use to have an at glance look um, before making the inspection. So they're, they're up to date on what, how the weld was performed. Scrolling down, we can really graph anything we would like to. Um, so we've graphed power in this case, but we could take a look at our amps. Uh, we could take a look at our travel speed. Uh, we can really generate any uh, type of graph we want to look at the relationship of our weld. Uh, this is very, very good for any form of troubleshooting, gives us a lot of intuition over how the roto weld is performing second by second. Most importantly, we have the ability to review all of our video footage. Um, so this is where I can show you that we're in a, a much higher, higher quality than sort of what we're seeing uh, over the Zoom. So we can review. Um, so when we do have defects, we can go back to the exact point in time when they occur. And for the ultimate traceability, we can also click and download these videos very, very easily. Uh, same for our fill passes. So here we are with our one continuous fill pass. And again, it's all, all retained here on the video and saveable. From the Pro Data Log, we can also review all of the parameters. And then we can come down to our logs and we can see every uh, action that was carried out uh, to finish this weld, pre-flow, root, uh, fill pass, post-flow. And what we can do is we can actually graph any information that we would like to. So we can take date and time, travel speed, current, voltage, and we can make that into a, another report. And we actually have a second by second account uh, and a very small file format for saving uh, that shows us the exact weld time and the current voltage travel speed. And therefore we can also graph heat input, which I haven't, but we get the ultimate traceability. And it's in a very, very small file as a CSV file uh, compared to a video. So these are the types of logs that could be saved and retained for years, uh, taking up a very small amount of space on a hard drive. So that's our pro data log. I see that there's some questions in the Zoom meeting. So I'm going to go back, stop sharing my screen. So some questions we have here. So this eight inch weld, it, uh, that took nine minutes, David. Um, so that it varies. Um, we like to do a nice big cap pass. Um, Sometimes on a, on a schedule 40 pipe like this, we can do a root pass and a single fill pass. Uh, in about five and a half minutes uh, for sake of the demo and some talking time and to have a very nice broad cap. Uh, we've gone with a bit of a longer weld, uh, which took nine minutes. Um, the data uh, with regard to file formats, I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll, I'll, I'll speak with our software division. Um, and our solution for nozzles and flanges that need to be welded 90 degrees to the shell pipe. Um, some welds just aren't going to be turnable on roto weld. Uh, we can really only do the 1G spool welds that are uh, obviously in line with our axis. But we've had a lot of customers who actually, once they've adopted roto weld, they've adapted their engineering for the ultimate turnability. So the sort of the, the shops that are really performing well with roto weld are achieving about 85% turnability. Uh, meaning they still got about 15% uh, of joints that are going to have to be welded semi-automatically or out of position. Um, so what we see a lot of is newer operators can do the 1G spool welding with roto weld, and we can retain those higher skilled welders uh, with the 5G and 6G tickets uh, for that specific last 15% of the work. Um, some questions we had earlier, I'll go over uh, to give you more time if there's any other questions anyone would like to ask. Uh, does the torch have oscillation? Yes, it does. Um, so we're able to control our weaving width uh, through our menus as well as our weaving speed. Um, so we can really tune in a nice weave uh, with regard to our forward travel speed uh, to give us really any, any appearance we want on that finished weld. Uh, which materials can we weld? Uh, we can do carbon steel, high strength, low alloys, 
Um, stainless steels are very, very easy to weld because the same fundamentals with the Lincoln STT and the Lincoln pulse modes apply to stainless steels very well, uh, very easy and very intuitive. Uh, we can weld Inconel alloys with the correct wire and gas combinations. Uh, and the Lincoln power source also has multiple welding modes for Inconel alloys, uh, but we cannot weld titanium. Uh, the only reason for that being not that uh, we're not capable, but titanium usually requires a 100% purged environment. Uh, so quite common that it needs to be in uh, some sort of purge chamber or bubble during welding. Um, can we zoom into the rack gear drive under the welding carriage? Uh, question here from Mark. So what's the minimum pipe diameter? Uh, we advertise a uh, three inch pipe, but we actually have customers welding all the way down to two inch. Uh, we've, we really worked hard with our, our positioner is designed and built in house. Uh, so we actually design our own torque and acceleration patterns. And we have very smooth turning even down to the two inch diameter. Uh, and one inch would even be possible, uh, but the use case and the basically the ROI and the efficiency on a one inch with setup time versus weld time uh, becomes very, very difficult. So while customers are still using it on two inch, uh, we don't see very much smaller than that. And this, uh, at, at this point, we're at the end of our demo and tour. So I'd like to thank everybody who joined. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time out of your schedule. Again, uh, we'll be able to distribute this video. Uh, it's all recorded. Um, so everyone can rewatch if they would like, um, share with their colleagues. And uh, most importantly, if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to us, uh, info at rotoweld.com, and we'll make sure those questions uh, or any technical info you need uh, gets to you. Thank you very much, everybody.